Texas is experiencing one of the most dramatic spikes of coronavirus cases in the U.S. and hospital beds are rapidly filling. I am asking the community to stay home. But what's driving the sudden surge? And could it have been avoided? Texas recorded its first case back in March, and for a while, thanks to the lockdown, it looked like the state would avoid the worst of the virus. But Texas has the 10th largest economy in the world, and slowing the spread of COVID-19 meant grinding that economy to a halt. No one reached out to me and said, uh, as a senior citizen, uh, are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the America that all America loves. And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Many felt the economic toll the virus took on Texas was far outpacing the number of COVID-19 cases in the state. Texas was doing pretty well, and well enough that the politics began to overtake the medicine. And the pressure built very quickly to move the concentration of the government that had been thinking about a disease to the concentration of a government on the economy. By early May, while the virus was ravaging states on the East Coast, Texas was reopening. To some extent, you have to be sympathetic with the people governing because they're trying to choose between two bad things. Do I want to shut down the economy to slow this disease, or do I want to open the economy back up and let this disease run? Some experts say the state moved forward with reopening before meeting several benchmarks, like the goal for positive test, which says that for a safe reopening, less than 5% of tests for the virus should return positive. The percentage in Texas has always been much higher. And in a state where 18% of residents are uninsured, the healthcare system is struggling to keep up they've been reactive more than proactive. And if you're watching politicians be reactive, you're watching sort of public opinion live. In the US, it's been up to states to impose rules on masks. In Texas and around the country, you started to see a political difference rather than just a medical difference in who was wearing a mask and not. Like the rest of the country, cities in Texas tend to be liberal, but rural parts of the state lean conservative, and so do the state's elected officials. And that political divide has led to conflicting approaches to tackling the virus and mixed messages to the public on masks. To this day, the governor says, I'm not going to require masks, but you really ought to wear them. And though he's paused reopening, there's still been an exponential growth in cases, and the peak is yet to come. You're still going to be hearing bad things about Texas and bad things about the governor for a couple of weeks until those numbers turn. 